Okay, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to look at hooking up AngularJS into Webpack. We're going to start where we left off in the last episode, where we installed and configured TypeScript. If you'd like to catch up, get check out Hookup Angular. Now, Angular recommends using the Angular CLI for most things. And for most things, it's really great. As to setting up a new project so the developer can understand it, that's not one of them. The Angular CLI gives you a finished Webpack boilerplate. If you run ng-new, you'll end up with a finished Webpack boilerplate. It'll be running and compiling with Webpack, but it will hide the configuration away, and it'll obscure changing it. Now, that's the opposite of what I'm trying to do in this course. So I invite you to explore the Angular CLI as well, as it has some other great features. In this lesson, we're going to include the Angular framework like it's just another package, so we can focus on how Webpack works with Angular. Now in our terminal, let's install a bunch of packages. These are the Angular core packages and three secondary packages that we won't be using much in this class, but are useful for Angular in general. There's also the polyfill packages and a observable data package. All right, cool, they all came down. Now we're gonna install some types so, so that TypeScript can interact with Node and with CoreJS. Without these, you'll get some pretty strange errors. So let's npm install types node and types core.js. We'll put them in save dev. So they're only in the development environment. Now let's make a couple of files. So we need an Angular file, and we're going to need an Angular polyfills. Cool. So now inside of our Webpack dev, we can include these as entry points. Let's make this Angular, pointing to the Angular TS file. And then let's create a new one, polyfills. And we'll point that at Angular polyfills. Now, you'll notice I'm using JS and .ts. We can ignore that if we add resolve extensions .js and .ts. So this is going to tell Webpack, hey, you know what? We know what we're using here. Let's just leave these off. I'm not sure if that's more or less confusing, but it is an option. Finally, let's add one option to our dev server. History, API, fallback, true. Now, we're not going to use the Angular routing in this lesson, um, but if you're using Angular with Webpack, you're going to want this turned on so the Angular routing works. So actually, let's flip these. Polyfills should go above Angular. Now, down in the plugin section, we're going to add a new plugin. It comes with Webpack, and it's called the Context Replacement Plugin. That takes two options. The first is a regex. The second is an absolute path. And the third is an empty object. So what Context Replacement Plugin does is it tells Webpack, hey, whenever you see Angular Core, and this regex in the middle here is just a way to indicate both Windows and Mac versions of directory systems. So Windows will do backslashes and Macs will do forward slashes. But it says Angular Core. So when you find that, the context should be our local source. And what this does is it allows Webpack to skip all the system imports that Angular uses on its own. So there's kind of a conflict here. Both are going to use system import, but we want Angular to take care of the system imports and not Webpack. So now if we run npm run dev, we can see we need it at a comma. We have our same TypeScript error, that's nice. That's throwing the error even though it's not being loaded into Webpack. Interesting. All right, so we can fix that. And now it's compiling successfully. All right, so now it's time to add our first Angular component. Inside of our Angular TS, let's import a couple of things. So import is how TypeScript 
does requires. We're going to make a directory, source components, and source components app. Now let's go inside source components app and create four files app module ts, app component ts, app component html, and app component css. So you can see we've made these files. This is also a comma, which it should not be. So the last thing we want to do is we want to call our platform browser dynamic. That's a function. And on that function, we're going to call bootstrap module, which comes up in our autocomplete and actually gives us a description of what it does. It creates an instance of ng module for a given platform using the given runtime compiler. So here's the runtime compiler. We're going to bootstrap module and here's the given module, app module. So before we get into our app module, let's update our index.html. In the index.html, we're going to replace all of this. And instead, we're going to use a selector root app. And inside this empty selector, we're going to say loading. So root app is going to appear in the next build. So now in app module, let's start building the root component that's going to render in root app. We're going to import ng module. So we're creating a new decorator. And it's for this class, class app module, which will be empty. The decorator has three properties. It's going to bootstrap the app root, which is the component we're about to build. The app root's going to have its own declarations. And it needs the browser module to mount in that root app. So now in app component.ts, let's import component from Angular Core. And inside here, we're going to set up that selector root app. We're also going to import our styles and our HTML. Okay, and that's going to decorate this class here, AppRoot. There's only going to be one variable inside AppRoot, and that'll be the message. Last, let's open up our app.component.html and add that profile now we've seen this profile div before and this image we're replacing the heading with message which uses this handlebars-like syntax to include variables. 
That's being required into the template part of this component decorator. So we can see we're compiling successfully. Let's see what it looks like in the browser. All right, so it's giving us an error. In this configuration, Angular requires zone.js. We can include that in our polyfills. So inside Angular polyfills, let's import some stuff. Core.js ES6, reflect metadata, and finally zone.js dist zone. Now you notice that the hot module reloading works, but it doesn't update the browser. All right, it's working. So now we want to do the classic Angular Hello World and use some two-way data binding. So inside our app component.html, let's add an input. And in order to bind it, we use this syntax, ngModel equals the name of the variable we want to bind to. Angular will read this when it compiles the template in this section. and It'll bind this message variable to that input. So we see we have a can't bind to ng model. Input is going to need another library, which is the forms module. Let's also import it. All right, back to normal. So now we have a little form in here. Let's give it some styles. Let's do input padding 20, font size 2, text align center, and margin 0 auto. All right, so let's hook this up. So we're going to require this the same way we do our HTML with one small difference component.css. Now at the end of this we're going to want to say to string so that the styles gets a string output. If we don't do to string instead it'll get the result of the style loader. So let's reload. And you can see Angular is pulling in the CSS just fine. And now we can dynamically edit our input. Classic Angular. In this episode we got up and running with Angular 5 and Webpack. We included our first component and got two-way data binding working. We didn't look too deeply under the covers as to what Angular is really doing. Instead, I wanted to show you how Webpack handles Angular's TypeScript, a unique declarative API to easily cobble these kinds of components together. If you need the final code, get checkout Hookup Angular Final.